If you've been around the YouTube gaming space for a while, you've probably at least heard the name GameXplain. GameXplain is a YouTube channel with multiple hosts that boasts over 1 million subscribers and have been posting videos for 14 years now to their YouTube channel. Their videos mainly focus on Nintendo games, and they make content such as analyzing trailers, showing gameplay, holding discussions about Nintendo and the gaming space in general, and some typical Let's Plays. Well, back in 2021, Game Explain came under fire for what was reported to be terrible work conditions. Three of their main hosts left, blaming the main host of Game Explain, Andre, for bad work conditions, low pay, and extreme crunch time. Even though most of the Game Explain staff left back in 2021, the head host, Andre, is still there. And as of a couple days ago, it's been reported that those bad work conditions might still be prevalent at Game Explain. Today, I want to go over Game Explain as a whole, what happened back in 21, and how it relates to what's happening today. Now we can see here that Game Explain has been making videos for a long time. These oldest videos are labeled 14 years ago, which was what, back in 2010? And they are still making videos today, mostly focused on Nintendo games. Now what I want to go over today doesn't necessarily have to do with Game Explain's content, it has to do with their work environment. Now to start discussing Game Explain's work environment, we need to go back to this post made on Reset Era back in 2021. This post discusses Ash, Derek, and Steve, former employees of Game Explain, and what they experienced while working there and why they left the company. These former members of Game Explain went on to form their own company called Good Vibes Gaming, and on one of the episodes of their podcast, they talk about their time at Game Explain. Now, I want to start by discussing this post here made by Steve. Steve was employed at Game Explain to make guides for certain video games, and he explains here the work conditions and the low pay that he experienced. He says, all right, y'all, I've been trying to keep my distance from this, but I see a lot of questions that I feel deserve some context, and I don't want to remain silent when I feel the community deserves answers. Everything I'm going to say is rooted in fact. I won't be offering my opinions of GX, or Game Explain, or of Andre, the main host, just things I know to be true, because they happened to me. I joined Game Explain in December 2018. Andre started paying me for my work in September 2019. We discussed a fee of $550. I had no idea if my videos were even worth the amount I asked for, and I didn't know what anybody else at the channel was paid at the time. That $550 was a flat fee per month, not per video and without any additional performance-based incentives. That means if I did a couple of news updates or discussions, I got paid $550. Conversely, it also means if I was reviewing The Last of Us 2 while playing through Paper Mario Thousand Year Door and participating in Game Club, I still just got $550. Every month I also maintained GX's email server and worked with publishers and developers to secure review copies for the entire team. If I brought in a sponsorship deal, meaning I negotiated the deal, wrote, recorded, edited, and posted the video, I would receive 33% of the proceeds, with the remaining 67% going to the channel, but those were few and far between. I didn't consider what my hourly rate was until my wife showed me the math, and she was right. After Derek left, Andre offered me a full-time position for $50,000 annually, with 25% of sponsorships I brought in being offered. This was far lower than Andre was aware I was making at my full-time job at the time, and I couldn't accept it while supporting my family. I had concerns after seeing an employment contract offered to somebody else. There were clauses contained therein that would have brought a negative impact to my career. We're not asking people to unfollow GX, and we definitely don't want to undermine the work the new staff there has done and continues to do. They deserve the same consideration and love that you've shown all of us over the years, and all of us are unanimously agreed that we don't want this to undermine or reflect negatively on their efforts. Regardless of your own opinion of Andre or GX, I'd like to ask that nobody engage in harassment of any kind. That isn't what Good Vibes Games is about, and we don't condone that type of behavior, period. I hope this sheds some light on my experience with GX. I appreciate all the messages of support I've received over the past 24 hours. Hope I've answered your questions, and that's all I have to say about it. Love you all. So this was Steve who worked at Game Explain, and this kind of gives you an example of the poor work conditions when he's talking about very, very low pay and especially under crunch time when he's like reviewing multiple games at the same time. Now, he mentioned he didn't even realize how low his pay was until his wife stepped in and showed him. And his wife actually commented on a Reddit post saying, I'll say this, if Steve was treated like a person instead of a machine and paid fairly for the amount of work he was expected to put out, I would have fully supported him staying on at GX. However, for what worked out to be around $1 to $2 an hour between playing through games, writing and producing videos, maintaining and growing relationships with developers, working to get codes for games, etc., I would have been a terrible partner not to encourage him to find a way to continue doing what he loves in a healthy way. As far as him being a work phobic, he also maintains, and has since before GX, a corporate 9-to-5 career, 
while also helping raise four children. Trust me, he's extremely hardworking. So this is his wife basically doubling down on the extremely low pay that Steve received. But Steve is not the only employee from Game Explained back in the day that came out with these allegations. Now, this is a statement made by Derek, who was also an employee back in 2021 while Steve was employed. He says, Obviously, I've never posted to Reset Era before this, but I wanted to get some things out there that I've bottled up for some time now. I also want to provide some more context if possible, but these are just some of my experiences. First, none of us knew how much each other was making. All I knew is that I was making the most of all the employees, as I had been there the longest. Each year I would get a raise until I topped out at $5,000 a month in 2018. Despite asking for my yearly raise, Andre said that the channel couldn't afford it as by that point, John had been brought on. I didn't mind though, as having John on the team was a lifesaver. He was able to do updates and keep an eye on the channel lightening my daily workload significantly. I felt expected to be on call at all times and would be nervous to even leave my home most days, fearing that some random Nintendo news would come out. This didn't really go away until John joined and Amy pushed me to take time for myself. Rarely did Andre handle an update, and when it was just him, he would wait until either John or myself was free again to actually handle it. Before then, it always had to be done ASAP. As for Game Explains income, I was able to see the analytics for quite some time and the estimation is mostly on point, though there were some months where it would dip below that estimation. But the high end always felt massive, and I hoped that the rest of the team, especially John, was being compensated with that extra income. That said, I had to handle any work expenses myself for the most part, including consoles and equipment. The only part of my current setup provided by Andre is my mic. I paid for my flights to LA for E3 or trains to New York for Nintendo events while Andre would handle the cost of hotels if needed and meals if we were together. I never said anything as the expenses could be used as write-offs for my taxes and help to the end of the year. However, this year felt different as the team started talking more. I discovered that John was making less than half of what I did despite doing the same amount of work. Steve's income had already been brought up, and Ash had stepped back from the channel for only occasional work. He would send invoices that Andre would eventually get to, but Andre always had to be reminded to send our paychecks out. We tried to get a calendar started so he could be more consistent, but he resisted the idea. One other thing to know is that despite a Discord where we all chatted and coordinated, Andre would often DM each of us to ask specific things. Ostensibly, it was so that we could see them better, but often it felt like a way to strong arm for videos he wanted. There were many times when he wanted an update on something that I didn't feel was worth the time as I was working on other things, but he would push until I relented. Sometimes he gave up, but that was rare. It got to the point where I would ignore or put off looking at his DMs if I was busy with something else, or be more combative over the updates he wanted to put out. Andre was extremely controlling, seemingly timing things to directly disrupt plans. He gave John tons of work when his YouTube channel took off, making it difficult for him to make videos there. He also asked me to stop streaming to YouTube as he didn't like old game playthroughs mixed in with our current event style. As a side note, any money I earned from Super Chat had to be totaled by me and invoiced at the end of the year as a bonus. So leaving to Twitch served as a chance to earn money more immediately, especially with the baby on the way and Amy still unable to work on her own projects due to the effects of COVID. I prepared people for the move for a while as I completed the final playthrough, but on the day of my final stream, Andre contacted me and asked that I stream to Game Explains Twitch instead. His reason was that he wouldn't be able to make me properly full time if I streamed to my own Twitch, something he had been building towards through most of the year. If I streamed to my own Twitch, I'd be considered a freelancer and immediately have my pay removed with rates estimated at $15 to $20 per update and $100 to $150 per feature or review. He said I could have full control of the Game Explained Twitch though, so I felt strong-armed into taking the deal. I still got the money from subs and bits monthly, but I had to go through him. It also felt like he dragged his feet to confirm affiliate status because he thought me streaming would somehow turn people away from the new game club tier on the Patreon. Around September, he asked me to join a voice call where he wanted to discuss me at Game Explained going forward. I popped in at the appointed time and he asked me to be on camera. It turns out he had prepared a PowerPoint where he ran down several things. How COVID had affected ad rates and lowered income, how he was still paying me the same despite this, how I was fighting him when updates had to be done, and ultimately how I was bringing in less money for the channel than what I was being paid. It ended with a question of whether I was still loyal and still wanted an official full-time position. Again, with the baby on the way, I was scared to the point of meekness because I felt I couldn't put Amy and the baby in that position. When Andre finally presented me with the full-time contract, I was in the middle of a nightmare moving situation where I could barely focus on anything. He pushed the fact that I had to make a decision as soon as possible due to timing, but I could not change my income situation without messing up my loan application. Ultimately, he gave me the time I needed and talked to the loan officers as my boss to help me get my loan. But in the intervening time, I was able to take a closer look at the contract. 
There were no defined set hours, no increase in pay, no overtime, no health coverage, not enough full-time employees, and overtime would only translate to extra time off, not to extra pay. In addition, he wanted to approve where I appeared and when I streamed, taking away the one bit of control I had with the Twitch. It felt like I had no say in my life. Everything had to go through him if I wanted to earn money beyond Game Explain. But worst of all was an NDA included with the contract. Tucked in the many points listed was a non-compete clause. Basically, if I signed the contract and left or was fired from Game Explain for any reason, I would not be able to work in the same space for a year. I took this to mean no YouTube, no games media, nothing. I talked to a lot of people around the time trying to figure out what to do, and after speaking with all of them including Amy, Ash, Steve, and John, I ultimately decided to leave with Ash and Steve coming with me so that we could pursue Ash's idea of good vibes gaming. It felt better to leave and attempt my own thing rather than deal with the contract and the general stress and pressure of Game Explain. Money is tight, but I am so much happier now. Now obviously this is a very lengthy statement, but Derek goes into strong detail about what happened over there and how Andre was strong arming him into making specific decisions and making it feel like Derek could not do what he wanted to do. Now in this space of YouTube and Twitch content creation and game reviews and things like this, having someone strong armed into a position and not giving them the freedom to stream on their own or to make content on their own is a bit ridiculous. If you want Derek to host the Game Explain Twitch, that's perfectly fine, but he also has the right to run his own Twitch channel where he earns money on the side, or his own YouTube channel where he earns money on the side. Anyone should be able to do that, whether they're a host on a platform or not. This on top of Derek realizing that the other employees were getting paid less than half of what he was being paid for the same work, it seems like the pay situation at Game Explain was just all over the place and handled very, very poorly. Now, after all of these statements were made, they were posted to the Game Explained Reddit, and a mod of that subreddit, who a lot of people thought was Andre, deleted the posts and made the subreddit private, seemingly so that no one could see the posts. Now, all of this did happen back in 2021, which led to Ash, Derek, and Steve leaving the company and creating Good Vibes Gaming. But now, in 2024, there are some new but very familiar allegations. Now, on January 30th, 2024, or yesterday as of the date of this video, we have Jake here on Twitter, one of the new employees at Game Explain, saying, why I left Game Explain. And he puts out this statement. He says, I found the work incredibly unfulfilling, and as time went on, my technical abilities and efficiency were used against me to constantly squeeze out more videos. Even while giving 100% and even while producing far more content than my peers, I found myself repeatedly interrogated about how I could do more. How could I be more efficient? How could I sacrifice time to think or be more creative in order to produce more disposable content? I was overworked and underappreciated. While my boss was streaming games or bragging on Twitter about the channel performing better than ever, I was churning out the content that got it there. I would work past midnight to cover a late Mario Kart DLC launch, then start my next day at 8am. Nobody cared what I was missing out on. I would work weekends to cover big releases after Nintendo revoked the channel's PR access. I was made to feel like a crazy person for thinking that grinding on content for a whole Saturday was made okay by getting off a single slow news day. I would beg for KPIs that would let me know there was at least some metric, some way I could say I did a day's worth of work and be done. I think I'm good at representing myself in confrontational settings, but at best I'd kindly be told things would change, they never did, and at worst be talked down to like a child for expressing dissatisfaction. But hey, nobody can stop me now. I was fortunate enough to land some writing opportunities when I needed them most, and that will cushion me for a minute before the search begins for my next full-time thing. Now, with this recent statement from Jake, it kind of feels like not much has changed at Game Explains since all the controversies back in 2021. He states extreme crunch time, how he's not appreciated there, how he gets talked down to, and he didn't necessarily mention pay, but he did say he had to land some writing opportunities to cushion him after he left the job. Now, obviously, fans of the channel, after seeing this, just go back to 2021 and they think, hey, has has nothing changed? Is Andre still running this show where he doesn't pay people properly and mistreats them and expects way too much from them? Well, Andre himself did put out a statement after seeing Jake's statement here, and we're going to read that now. It's a little lengthy, so I'm going to try and just highlight parts of it, but let's get into it. So like I said, this is from Andre, the main host of Game Explain, who back in 2021 everyone said was causing these bad work environment issues, and now who Jake is saying was talking down to him the whole time and causing him to have extreme crunch in his job. Andre says, Hey everyone. 
What I'm able to say will be slightly limited for employee confidentiality reasons, but I'll do my best to address as much of Jake's concerns that I can. First to Jake, I feel horrible that you felt overworked and underappreciated. From your very first application, you always went above and beyond my expectations for work, even when I tried to rein in your efforts at times. And I want you to know that I tried my best to ensure you didn't end up feeling how you did. I checked in with you personally on multiple occasions, specifically whenever I noticed you might have been feeling stressed or burned out, to see if there was anything about work that we could address to improve how you felt. But whenever I tried to discuss this with you, you almost always assured me that you were fine, either writing it off as a temporary feeling that you overcame, or that there were other reasons beyond work making you feel that way. It's hard for me to fix something when I'm not being told the full truth of the matter. One of the few issues Jake did clearly communicate to me was how he felt his workload was imbalanced specifically as it related to one of his coworkers. Jake felt he was putting in more effort based on the amount of videos output per person, with the other co-worker's performance being deemed lesser. Now, I've never worked at a workplace where someone didn't feel like they did more work than another, or feel another co-worker wasn't entirely pulling their weight. And as such, this is an incredibly hard issue to address, especially for a small team, as there are countless factors in play. In this case, the different job roles we're discussing were different. Jake was hired primarily as a news editor, with a focus on more frequent but shorter and less complicated videos, whereas the other staff members were more focused on longer form features to varying degrees, which naturally take a lot longer to produce. In response to the concern, I immediately performed an audit over a two-month period to assess the workload and output balance, and while Jake did end up producing more videos as expected, it wasn't by such a large margin that it seemed out of balance with the longer features the other staff members produced. For all of its benefits, it sometimes sucks having to work remotely. Not only is it difficult not being able to see and interact with coworkers face to face without scheduling a meeting or making it feel like an intrusion, but we also don't have the natural transparency into what each other is doing on the day to day basis that we would in an office setting. And Jake, not having the same bird's eye view that I had, clearly wasn't aware of the true amount of time and effort the team members in question was putting in, as effort isn't a metric that can be measured only by tabulating the numbers of videos produced in the end. A few weeks ago, during the last discussion I had with Jake about this issue, I tried to explain that what matters most at the end of the day is his own work. Instead of constantly comparing himself to a perceived level of a colleague's output, and to focus on what we can do to ensure he isn't feeling overworked or burned out. Unfortunately, this was perhaps what he perceived to be me addressing him like a child, which was not at all my intent. I took steps to try and head off potential troublesome areas, such as when we were working together on the plans for our semi-regular news show. Jake initially wanted it to be every day before I suggested that we keep it to three days a week to start in order to give him time to breathe, assess, and prepare between each episode. I tried to work with him on the general workflow after each episode to ensure it was manageable and eventually resulted in several segments getting cut, which was apparently perceived as me scrutinizing his work or interrogating him when I was just trying to understand his workflow so I could offer suggestions on how we could improve it. I tried to work with Jake to increase efficiency, not to increase output, but to ensure he wasn't putting in more time and effort than needed, and that projects such as the new show could be comfortably executed within a typical shift on the schedule we settled on. Now, as you can already tell in this statement, this is not an apology of any form from Andre. This is not Andre taking responsibility. It is Andre saying Jake didn't know what he was talking about. None of those issues that he stated were actual issues, and he just didn't know any better. Which, as the head of a company and someone who's already been caught in pretty serious allegations back in 2021, you probably shouldn't be talking like this when everyone already knows that the work environment at Game Explain was terrible, since we have so many accounts and proof of that. Now, Andre goes on to say that sometimes they may have overworked, but he gave them extra days off, or he tried to give Jake creative opportunities, but Jake didn't want that. Jake said he had to work weekends sometimes, and Andre is saying here, despite it being made clear during the interview process that sporadic weekends may be needed, weekend work was almost never expected. The few times when I mentioned it may be necessary, to my memory, it rarely came to fruition. So he's basically saying Jake is blowing this out of proportion. Again, he says here, to address the final point, did I brag about channel performance? Yes, once because I was proud of what my team accomplished on the channel during a period that was incredibly challenging and uncertain for us. Running a YouTube channel isn't easy, especially when you have a full-time staff. The financials barely make sense, the economics don't scale, and a lot of my responsibilities to keep the channel running are invisible. Despite this, I've tried to maintain a level of flexibility for the staff, both out of respect for their personal interests and also their availability, and I've tried to accommodate them whenever life has gotten in the way, sometimes resulting in permanent schedule changes. Now, Andre says this here, but it's a little hard to believe considering back in 2021, this was one of the major issues. The finances weren't freely available for people to look at, which made some employees get paid a lot less. 
Also, they were under extreme crunch, sometimes having to complete games in two days, but here he's saying he's always flexible with his scheduling and always has been. Now, as you might imagine, people are not really taking this statement very well. He Again, he's not apologizing. He's not saying, I'm sorry for the poor work conditions. He's not addressing really any of the issues. He's saying that none of the issues even exist, and all the points that Jake made are wrong, and he just didn't know what he was talking about. Now, it's always unfortunate to hear that the employees of a company like Game Explain are going through such hard times and have been since the company's formation. It sucks that Andre can't take responsibility as a boss and business owner to just simply give people equal pay and not have them have super crunch time and give them a reasonable amount of time to review a game. This, again, is still an ongoing story, and we don't know all the details yet, but this has already been an issue since 2021. It's been ongoing for years. All the employees always leave saying that the conditions are are terrible, but it's good that the old employees made Good Vibes Gaming to kind of bring people together, bring those employees together that were out of a job, and actually treat them right. But let me know what you think about this issue in the comments. If you like this video or want more videos like this, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. If you want to watch me play games on Twitch, click the link in the description, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.